Good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome again to our lesson for this day. It's a blessed Sabbath and I want to believe God has been with you so far. So good. We thank God. I just want to introduce my panelists. Today, we are a triad. It's like a men's conference, a group of uh, three men that are going to lead us in this discussion. And by far, this should be my left side. It's Brother Jovin Odiambo joining us from Kisumu. Jovin, good morning and happy Sabbath. A good morning and a happy Sabbath to you. I'm so glad to join you this morning. Oh, thank you very much. We are blessed to have you all the way from Kisumu. And then joining us so from Nairobi is uh, Elder John Nyambani. John, good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning and happy Sabbath. I believe all of us are well. We are going to study together this wonderful Sabbath. Oh, thank you very much. We are blessed to have you. Are you speaking? I'm going to be your host on Barack Kowili. And be blessed, let us study together. We're in the lesson four of this quarter. Prayer, power, interceding for others. Before we begin, I want us to have a word of prayer so that we can delve into the study. I'm going to invite John to pray with us. John, welcome and pray with us. Okay, let's pray. Our loving Father in heaven, thank you so much for this wonderful morning, for the masses and the love that you have bestowed upon us this wonderful morning. A happy Sabbath it is. And we are glad to get here. Know that which you have for us, you know, what may lead us into all truth to come closer and amen and amen. I thank you very much. We almost lost you during the prayer and we almost opening our eyes. And we thank God. Uh, we want to believe you has had our prayers and that he will guide us in this wonderful study. So as I said, uh, we're in the lesson four of this quarter. We are making friends for God, the joy of sharing his message or his love or his mission. And so we are looking at uh, prayer power interceding for others. Our memory text is from the book of uh, James chapter 5, verse 16. I want to read from the New King James Version of the Bible. It has this to say, Confess your trespass to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That is what the Bible says. The effective prayer of a righteous man avails much. That is what the Bible is telling us. I don't know if you have had an interaction with a friend. You may be in a problem or you may be doing very well. If somebody tells you that, oh, I think about you, I am doing this for you, I will do this for you. It is something which, is, which can be good news. But what if somebody tells you that, oh, Jovin, good morning, how are you? By the way, I am praying for you. I think that is one of the most powerful things that somebody can do to you. If somebody tells you that for you, I am praying. Many times I see if a brethren is sick or suffering, I will see people texting on this platform where from which we communicate that I need the prayers of those I love. What if you just wake up in the morning and then you see a text from a friend and the message is, good morning, how are you? I hope you're doing well. I am praying for you. I think that's a powerful thing. It's a wonderful thing to know that you are in somebody's mind. It is a wonderful thing to know that somebody is actually concerned about you. It is a wonderful thing to know that actually somebody is praying for you. And that is what we are focusing or having a look at uh, this Sabbath. We look at the New Testament church, at the apostolic church. One of their pillars, one of their powers was based on their prayer life. In fact, if you look at the book of Acts, uh, chapter 4, verse 31. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. And there's a wonderful and remarkable result, which was because of their prayer culture. It says, And when they had prayed, 
the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. There is power in praying together. There is power in praying for somebody else that God may guide them and that God may be with them. And so this week, we are focusing basically on intercession, praying for somebody else, praying for your friends. By the way, how many times do you pray for somebody else? How many times do you think about someone else in prayer? When Paul exhorts uh, Timothy, Timothy was like his spiritual son. And then Paul said in the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 1, one of my favorite uh, texts, Therefore I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. That is what Paul is saying. Prayers be made for all men. Somebody can ask you, by the way, have you prayed for your president? You may be criticizing and having issues with the way he's doing his work. But the question is, have you prayed for him? And so let intercession and supplications and prayers be made for all men. And uh, I want to invite you that you may be with us. In the book, The Acts of the Apostles, page 37, written by Ellen Goldwhite, she says, the disciples did not ask for a blessing for themselves merely. They were waited with the burden of the salvation of souls. They realized that the gospel was to be carried to the world, and they claimed the power that Christ had promised. Not for themselves, but for others, and especially those to whom they were supposed to minister. The message, the gospel, was to be taken to the whole world. That is what they did. And so as we move ahead, as maybe one of the reasons we need to pray, I want to bring to us the reality of a cosmic conflict that is ongoing. Now, uh, conflicts or wars or battles are not something which could be new to us because the world in which we live in has brought such realities to us. If you're a student of history, you just know that uh, we had World War I, 1914, 1918. We had World War II, 1939 to 1945. And we've also had cold wars and we've been having even communal wars in very many places. So the fact that there is a war or conflict or chaos is not something new to us. It is a reality which is uh, part and parcel of our lives. But today I want to bring to us another conflict which is quite uh, demanding. It is a conflict which is not just limited to some particular place, but a conflict in which each and every person is a participant. And you are also a participant in that conflict. If you look at the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 12 uh, from verse 7 presents uh, the beginning or the uh, genesis or the uh, start of this conflict. Uh, it says, And uh, war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of all called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world, he was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. It's the beginning of the cosmic conflict that uh, the devil is fighting uh, with Michael and his angels. Question, who could be Michael? Now, the word Michael appears, so it's used in the Bible uh, five times. Once in Revelation, once in the book of Jude, and uh, three times in the book of Daniel. And the way it has been used, uh, the word Michael uh, which, if translated, means who is like God, actually refers to Jesus Christ as the commander of the angels, leading them in conquest against the kingdom of Satan. In the book of Ephesians 12, again, we are being reminded that we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. And so uh, the fact that we have a conflict that is ongoing is something which is real, something which we cannot uh, controvert, something that we cannot ignore. You will see it in your life. You will see it in even some of the things you do. Paul still writes, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down our strongholds. 
So one thing should come out clear to us, that there is a conflict that is ongoing. There is a conflict that is ongoing in which each and every soul is involved. And we have a work to do to be able to stand for God. We have a work to do to be able to stand in line in the right way. In the book, Great Controversy, page 525, it is written, and I quote, it is a part of God's plan to grant to us in answer to the prayer of faith that which you would not bestow did we not thus ask. I think that is quite remarkable. That it is part of God's will to grant us as an answer to prayer of faith that which he could not have granted had we not prayed for it. And so there is power in praying that God may be able to stand with us and that God may be able to work with us. And because we're in a conflict, there is even greater need that we be able to pray not for ourselves, but that we stand in the gap for others. I think that is remarkable. I think that is wonderful. As we move ahead again, uh, Christ, we are being reminded that Christ Jesus is our mighty intercessor. You always need an intercessor. When you go to the court of law, you need um uh, and you need somebody to stand in the line for you. You need an advocate, but Christ is our intercessor. I want to invite Brother John to tell us something uh, briefly over that. Welcome, John. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, today, as we focus more on prayers and interceding on behalf of others, uh, I want to look at one great example that we have in the Bible, and that is our only and true example, that is Jesus Christ. And uh, mm -hmm. we are told that Jesus is the mighty intercessor. That is on the Monday part. And uh, what you're going to focus on, uh, uh, this day is how Jesus uh, uh, prayed for specific people while he was still here on earth. And uh, I want to read, uh, as a verse from Luke chapter 22, verse 31 and 32. Luke chapter 22, verse 31 and uh, 32, which says that, uh, and uh, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you a sweet, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And from that verse, we see uh, clearly uh, an example that we are going to look into uh, in the very few minutes that we have. Uh, first of all, we see that Jesus' life was one of a constant uh, divine union with his father. And at the time of his baptism, when he launched his messianic ministry, we see that Jesus prayed uh, for divine power to accomplish the heaven's purpose. And, uh, Whichever miracle he, he did, whether it was feeding the uh, 5,000 people, healing the leper, deliverance of the demoniacs, and any other thing, he realized that uh, it is a battle between good and evil. And because it is a battle between good and evil, prayer was a mighty weapon to beat back the forces of hell. And uh, uh, even as we learn that prayer is the heaven ordained way of combining helpless uh, effort and uh, weakness with God's omnipotent power, we have to lift ourselves up toward God so that he alone can touch the hearts of those whom we pray, the hearts of those whom we pray for. And therefore, as we see that Jesus didn't rely on his uh, strength uh, majorly, he was dependent on the strength of the omnipotent through prayer. And one example that uh, we have seen that uh, Jesus left uh, is that he, he prayed for specific people. Uh, we see that in the verse that we have just read. And uh, we see that Jesus prayed for Peter because he knew that Peter wasn't aware that he needed help on that fateful night. But Jesus interceded on his behalf. Yeah, sometimes uh, uh, other people whom we interact with, other people whom we have uh, contact with may be facing serious challenges, may be having serious temptations, or may not be seeing the circumstances which are ahead of them. But you can clearly see uh, them as a servant of God, as a man of God. And what do you do in that state? 
you pray for them so that in the event that uh, the unlikely will happen, uh, they will be safe because they have been protected by the power of Jesus, uh, by the blood of Jesus Christ, because you prayed for them. And therefore, uh, God encourages us to bring specific people to his throne and leave them on his hand. And we must persist until we see the result. And remember that even at this particular point, Jesus is still interceding on our behalf and is praying on our behalf. Thank you. I thank you very much, John. That is wonderful. In fact, if you look at the book of John chapter 17, Christ is prayed for his disciples and he also prayed for all those who will believe through them. I love this. John 17, verse uh, uh, 20 and 21. I do not pray for this alone, but also for those who will believe me through their words, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. How wonderful is it to think that Christ prayed for you? I think that is wonderful. I will move ahead again and um, a champion of the New Testament, as far as the evangelism is concerned, is uh, Apostle Paul. Could we find that in his life he was also interceding and praying for the churches which he planted in Philippi, in Colos, in Thessalonica, in Ephesus, and all those churches? Uh, Brother Jovin, can you tell us something briefly about that? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Brother Kowili, once more. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, if there is something that we as Adventists, as pilgrims who are waiting, for the second coming of our kings uh, are to cultivate, then it is the spirit of prayer. A, a prayerful life is a peaceful life, and it is a life that is uh, of, the, of, uh, of a good example unto the rest. After we have looked at uh, Jesus Christ, uh, the next example that we are looking at uh, uh, is uh, Paul, and we find a very nice example from the story of Paul. I would just like to read the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16. Uh, Paul is writing to the Ephesian church. And he's saying that, uh, that do not cease to give thanks for you, making a mention of you in my prayers. Uh, Paul was writing to this Ephesus church and he is reminding them of uh, how much he has been praying for them, that he has not ceased to make a uh, uh, to give thanks for them. He was thanking God for the spiritual growth that had uh, happened in the church of Ephesus. So why is Paul a good example to us? And what example uh, do we draw that is profitable unto our life? That is what we are going to look at during this Sabbath. So number one, Paul believed that something could happen if he prayed, which couldn't happen if he did not. And that is very true. Uh, uh, even in our lives, there are very many things that had we prayed, couldn't have happened. But because we neglected prayer, they happened to us. A perfect example is us being drawn to sin. You'll find out that prayer is always the breath to our soul. And once our soul is dis disconnected uh, from God, because uh, we are not praying and we are not in the divine presence of our Lord, we find out that Satan finds an easy way to tempt us. And we find it, it, when he tempts us, it, it, it finds when we are very weak, uh, such that we cannot resist such temptations. Such was the example when Jesus was praying in the mountain. And after praying in the mountain, he came down uh, to his disciples. And uh, when he found them, he found them being uh, ambushed by a crowd because they could not cast out demons. And in Matthew, Jesus has given them the power to cast out demons. And so when they could not be cast out demons, it, it is because the disciples had neglected the power of prayer. So a perfect example uh, that we find from Paul is that a prayer will enable us to evade some things that could have happened to us uh, had we not prayed. Uh, number two, uh, uh, Paul was always united with all these churches uh, through his prayer. And that is a nice example to us. Through our prayers, 
we unite with our brethren. Through our prayers, we feel the infirmities that our brethren are feeling. Through our prayers, we are able to bear the burdens of each other. Through prayers, we are able to know that so and so is undergoing this and this. And uh, through that, we show our care. And uh, how much more does God love that? That we show our love to one another through us praying. A perfect example is Ephesians uh, chapter, uh, chapter 1. Uh, verse 17 to 23. Uh, Paul is uh, praying or, or is giving these people uh, information about what he has been praying for uh, them. So what can we pray uh, or what can we present to God as request for our friend? The, 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 the limit is <laughs> infinite. It is limitless. You can always present anything to God about your friend. For example, Paul, when you read the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 to 23, Number one, uh, he prays that God may give them wisdom. That is verse 17. I, at the same same verse 17, he prays to them that they may know God better. When you turn to verse 18, he prays that uh, they may know the hope of his calling. And all of us, we have this blessed hope. And when you turn to the, verse 18, uh, uh, he's praying that they may know the glorious inheritance that is yet to come. And lastly, when you turn to verse 19 to 23, Paul is praying that the church may know God's mighty power. And the same, same God is still powerful in our lives. So, brethren, if it is, there is an, a, an example that we are to showcase unto the rest, just as Paul, it is the example of prayer. A prayerful life will lead us into forsaking so many things that we could have done uh, had we not prayed. Thank you very much, brother. I thank you very much, Even That is so wonderful. We see it in the life of Paul. And anyone who wants to become a serious evangelist in a time such as this, it is need that you actually uh, pray for those people to whom you have uh, taken the word of God. Again, in our lives, sometimes things happen in a way that we cannot understand. There are some unseen battles that are, are ongoing that we, may, we know nothing about. And uh, what if God can open our eyes to see them? Look at Elisha and his servant Gehazi trembling at the yeah. approaching army. And then Elisha told him that if your eyes can open, you can be able to see actually the host of God surrounding us. And he was able to see. Could it be that we have some unseen powers at work? Welcome, John. I'll tell us something about unseen powers at work. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, we are still continuing with the theme and the aspect of intercessory prayers. And we want to see maybe the role of these intercessory prayers, uh, even when we have unseen powers at work. Okay. One thing we have learned is that this intercessory prayer is a mighty power, or rather it's a mighty weapon in this battle between good and evil, and which we always call the great controversy. And one of the clearest uh, revelation of this struggle is revealed in Daniel chapter 10. And uh, uh, before uh, we, we read, uh, read that Daniel chapter 10, we want to see or understand that uh, there was a time that the uh, Israelites were taken captive to Babylon. And even as they were taken captive to Babylon, they were there for 70 years. And at the end of Daniel's life and the prophetic period, uh, the, the Jewish captivity was almost coming to an end. And so Daniel was concerned and uh, he decided to pray over the same because he saw an evidence of a fulfillment from Jeremiah's uh, words. And still, uh, by then, by the time he was making the prayers, people were still in bondage. And therefore, what... Uh, did Daniel do that? Uh, it is because uh, actually what he noticed is that uh, the Babylonians uh, had been overtaken by the Meds and Persians, yet the Jews were still in uh, bondage. So Daniel went ahead and fasted and prayed for three weeks and he honestly interceded for his people. Uh, after doing this, we see that uh, at the end of uh, these three weeks, at the end of these prayers, uh, there's something that happens because an angelic being 
uh, appears to him and confirms that his prayers has been, have been heard. And so I want us to focus on Daniel chapter 10, uh, verse 12, which uh, said, uh, or rather which says that, uh, then he said unto me, then he said unto me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. So here we see that uh, Daniel is being told that from the very first moment when he just started to pray, I believe in day one, that uh, God heard his prayer and he had uh, prepared to come and answer. But you see, uh, God did not come on the first day. He came after 21 days. That's when he sent his angelic being. And uh, that's why we see that uh, at first, it looked like his prayer was not being answered after so many days, and the situation was not changing at all. But finally, uh, we, as we have seen that God sent a vision uh, to the prophet in the appropriate moment, and he assured Daniel that his prayers had been uh, listened since the first one. And uh, if, we, if we look keenly at those verses from Daniel chapter 10, from verse 10 to 14, uh, we see other forces coming into play and we come to realize in as much as uh, uh, some aspect like the prince of the kingdom of Persia uh, is mentioned there, it actually represents Satan and uh, because Jesus calls him the prince of this world, that is according to John chapter 12 verse 31 and John chapter 14 verse 30. And uh, here we see also that uh, Paul also labels him as the uh, prince of the air. And therefore, uh, as we go, we also see that it was Michael who came to the aid of uh, of uh, to the aid of, of Daniel in this battle, and we see and we understand that Michael here stands for Jesus Christ, and therefore uh, we see that uh, Christ Himself uh, came to rescue uh, uh, the people of Israel because uh, from this mighty power, which was labeled the Prince of Persia, who was Satan. And therefore, uh, uh, how did this come into play? Even though we did not see Satan, literal Satan, we did not see a literal uh, Jesus, but there was the Prince of Persia and there was Michael. We come to see that Christ, him being the eternal, pre-existent, all-powerful and divine Son of God, his function, uh, main function, is uh, the commander of all angels and is, it is to defeat uh, and finally or ultimately destroy Satan. And therefore, uh, uh, one thing we learn is that uh, God had been working in other aspects of the battle before answering Daniel's prayer. And therefore, we have to, uh, we need to have this assurance that he listens to every intercessory prayer, although we may, we may have to wait for his answer. And as I finish, uh, we get to see that uh, the whole picture in Daniel 10 draws a curtain aside and reveals this struggle between good and evil. And as Daniel prays, we see that Jesus Christ comes to rescue and beat back the forces of hell. <laughs> Therefore, uh, I'll finish this way that although we may not see it, Jesus is at work to answer our intercession as well. He is the mighty Savior. Not one of our prayers was unnoticed. Thank you. Thank you very much. That is wonderful. It is remarkable to realize that there are some prayers, so there are some spiritual conflicts that Gabriel cannot win, that Christ himself have to come in place. And so I think it's a wonderful thing. The safest place to be is to be on the Lord's side. The devil is powerful. Don't uh, ignore and assume. But uh, you need to face him when you are hidden behind the blood-stained banner of uh, Prince Emmanuel, and so we have power in Jesus Christ. Uh, maybe as we come to an end, I want to look at, uh, finally, a prayer focus. You know, sometimes when you're praying, it's good to be specific. I'm imagining that you have been granted a chance to go to the state house, to talk to the president. You cannot just say anything. People have to prepare very well, and that is not the time. Many you will not even send anyone. Somebody who has the ability to organize his words very well that he may be able to make things clear. So how do we need to pray? Tell us something about prayer focus, uh, Elder Jovi. 
Uh, thank you very much uh, once more. Uh, I just want us to focus on prayer, uh, how we need to pray and how uh, to pray. You know, uh, sometimes uh, people pray, but uh, uh, we do not know how to pray. That's mm -hmm. why, specifically, the disciples of Jesus Christ, they came to Christ and asked him, Lord, could you please teach us how to pray? And Jesus mm -hmm. went ahead to illustrate to them how they needed to pray. Uh, that story, you can find it in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, especially from verse 9 onwards. So when we are interceding for one another, we must uh, realize that there are very various uh, aspects of prayer. We can be interceding for one another. We can be praying for ourselves, uh, that we are supplicating. We can be confessing. At times, we are praising God, and at times, we are thanking God. But today, when we are looking at intercessory prayers, how we are to intercede for one another. I will combine this with how we as God's children, we are to supplicate even our own prayers to the Lord. So when we are praying for one another, just as Brother Barak has said, the prayer uh, time is one of the most wonderful times in the life of a Christian. And therefore, when you are before your father, you are in the most wonderful and the most solemn moment of your life. Uh, it is not... Uh, you, you are not to bring just to the Lord, to the Lord just a vogue longing, but we must approach God with very and very specific requests. We are to come to the to, to Lord with sincere and specific requests. And as we pray for one another, as we seek God's face or as we stand uh, in the gap for these people, we must do that fervently. We, must, we, we should not just uh, do it once and then uh, just to satisfy that I have prayed for so and so. Kindly just do it fervently so that your prayers may be without ceasing. When you read the book of First Samuel chapter 12 verse uh, 23, uh, Samuel is, uh, is telling us something that as for me, I will certainly not sin against the Lord by ending my prayers for you. So he's even bringing an aspect that... Uh, when we end our prayers for one another, it may lead us even into sinning uh, for the Lord. When we look at uh, 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 the example of Paul that I was talking about, he was praying for specific people uh, like his sons, like the people whom he was mentoring, and he was also praying for specific churches. Uh, he, he, had, he also went ahead even to ask the church to pray for his liberation or for his preaching to be strengthened. That is uh, from Philippians chapter 1, verse 19, as well as Colossians mm -hmm. chapter 4, verse 13. What of ourselves? Uh, when we pray uh, for ourselves or when we come to the Lord uh, in prayer, there, there are many a times that we pray, but we do not receive answers or uh, we do not receive responses as we would have wished. How then should I pray? Always pray to God the Father and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, we have the assurance, even when you cannot arrange your words very well, even when you cannot find the right tone or the right message, you can always pray through the Spirit because He'll make intercessions for us in groanings and even grumblings that we cannot understand. And even when you pray, always accompany that with faith. Without faith, it is so difficult to please our Lord. And just as we, we had said, these prayers must be very fervent and be uh, without uh, end. We must pray without ceasing. Uh, that is the counsel of Paul to the church in uh, Thessalonica. And uh, uh, we must always uh, be ready to put away or to do away with the sins of our lives that we come to the Lord uh, without the iniquities that we have committed. Because he says that if we regard iniquity in, uh, in our heart, he shall surely not listen to our prayer so th those we put it aside and then we obey the word of the lord when we do that we can be very sure that the lord has listened to us and an answer shall surely come to the prayers that we offer to him uh the very last thing that i say is that when we pray for one another or when we pray for others we become a channel of god's blessings to them and therefore a praying for one another is such a wonderful a thing that as Christians we should always be ready to do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jovin. That is wonderful. And so we need to
value or specificity or praying. You know exactly what we want to present before God. God is our Father, and uh, it will be well with us even as we pray for other people. That will mark the end of our uh, study uh, this week. I want to believe you've been blessed. I have been blessed. Uh, maybe as we finish, I want to get your final comments. Uh, what is uh, the greatest lesson that you have learned through this important lesson of actually praying one for another? John. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, there's one thing that stood out for me in uh, mm -hmm. this week's lesson. Actually, it's very important, and I've seen that if I don't mention it, maybe we may not uh, see the very uh, most important thing as to why intercess intercessory prayer is needed. Uh, I want to focus on maybe a question if you ask yourself, can this intercessory prayer or does intercessory prayer give life to an individual? Maybe you are wondering what is the answer. Uh, I'd like to draw an example uh, from uh, the Bible. Uh, there's this one uh, sin called the unpardonable sin. And uh, we believe that uh, this is the sin that leads to death. And uh, even as we read the Bible, the book of John, First John, uh, John does not encourage us to pray for that sin, though he does, however, encourage us to pray for individuals who have not con committed the unpardonable sin, though we may not know who has committed or who has not committed, but we are called uh, to pray for everyone. And uh, as we ask God to save them, he gives us life for those who commit sin not leading to death. And how certain is that uh, statement? Uh, and what does it mean to, uh, to pray? What does it mean that God gives to the praying one, that is the intercessor, life for others? Do you believe that God can give you life for others? Let's look at this quote. Uh, SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 7, page 678, it says that Christ shall give their praying one, the praying Christian, life to pass to sinners who have not finally hardened their heart. This is a very remarkable statement. And it continues to say that the Christian has no power apart from the Savior. So, in the end, it is Christ who gives the life, though the intercessory prayer may have been the instrument through which that life has been granted. And uh, therefore, we see that our prayers become the channel for the very life of God to flow to hearts longing for salvation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jovin? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, something that I find out uh, in this uh, week's lesson is that we as God's people, we are connected together or we are in con interconnected in the great uh, web of humanity. And therefore, uh, if we are connected in this great web of humanity, as we call uh, God our Father, we recognize that our brethren as our brothers and our sisters. And therefore, no one prays right who does not remember to pray for his brother or his sister. That one will, uh, uh, will result to something that we call self. You only focus on yourself. So it is such wonderful to pray for our brothers and also to pray for our sisters. And Mark you, uh, prayer is uh, an important tool for overcoming the evil one. Because it is very important, he knows that when we pray, we shall actually overcome him. He will make sure that uh, when we are to pray, uh, he'll bring so many things, maybe doubt in our hearts, uh, pre-engagements or very many things, so that the hour of prayer silently passes unnoticed. In so doing, he shall have gained control of our hearts. So as pilgrims, we have to wake up and we have to pray earnestly. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. I think that was wonderful. Uh, even as we come to an end, I also just want to say that if you don't pray for someone, then you don't have the right to criticize them because if you prayed, then it will not have happened and you will not have found something to criticize in their lives. I want to finish with uh, Paul's exhortation to Timothy. 
in the book of uh, First Timothy. I read it and I want to repeat it because it's uh, touching me in a great way. First Timothy 2 verses 1. Therefore I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. May God lead you. May God keep you. Have a blessed Sabbath in Jesus' name. Let's have our closing prayer from Jovi. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, wherever we are, let us humble ourselves so that we may pray. Uh, thank you, Lord, uh, for the wonderful lessons, Lord, that we have learned in this week's lesson, Lord. You have inspired us. You have taught us. You have informed us, Lord Father. We ask you that you may now transform us, Lord Father, from a no prayer life uh, to a prayerful life, Lord, that we, thy children, Lord, may always be ready to stand in the gap for our friends, for those who have not yet known you, for even those who have known you, Lord Father, so that together, Lord, we may uh, impart uh, thy life unto them, Lord Father. I pray that we may uh, take this as our own task. We may take this gift of prayer, this privilege of prayer, as our own duty, Lord Father. May you guide us throughout the Sabbath. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Then amen. To God be the glory.